Welcome to the Jane Jacobs Forum. Thank you very much to the Rockefeller Foundation. Would you welcome, please, Greg Lindsay. Thanks, have fun. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you all for coming. It's an honor and a pleasure to be your host this evening. Um, Welcome to this year's forum. We have a new format this year. As you can see, it was developed in collaboration with the urbanists, the next generation of young leaders here at MAS. Um, the, the, this is a generation that was raised on TED Talks. Uh, and so we're gonna have a very fast paced evening out here. No podiums you can see. We're all out here naked alone on the stage. Um, and so the way this is gonna work is we're going to have, for, we're gonna have basically three pitches for three projects uh, about how they can improve the city. And first, we're gonna have a panel out here of, uh, of devoted urbanists, including two Jane Jacobs Medal award winners. They are going to ask of each project how they, what they can do for the city, how they can improve the city. And then at the very end, we are going to ask you, all of you, how you can help them improve their projects to really change the city. So if you're looking at your programs, you'll see on the back, there's a list of sort of criteria where you can take notes. Uh, this is going to be Aaron Barnes, one of our panelists is going to talk about IOB and basically sort of crowdfunding, which is of course one of the core Jacobsian ideas that we, the people, that we take form and action and we make the city ourselves. Um, and so, you know, we're gonna talk a bit about that later. Aaron will explain more. Um, and so, you know, we're gonna get in here and sort of discuss, you know, this whole notion of what these projects, how these projects can ignite and how we can remake the city. Um, because of course, we're here tonight to celebrate the legacy of Jane Jacobs. Um, but I think it's important that we don't fall into a trap that I often see that we regard her as Saint Jane, the patron of bicycles and sidewalk ballets and short blocks. Uh, someone who is involved in time, that we see her as, as primarily a preservationist, someone who wants to keep the, the city of 1961. Um, and that's not necessarily true, at least in my experience as, as someone who reads the text as a lay writer. Um, I think in doing so, if we only see her as caring about urban form, we miss a lot of the larger points that she raised in, the, in her book, The Economy of Cities, where she really sort of, you know, got to the crux of it, which is that cities exist to connect us. And in fact, I think it was the beginning of that book, or maybe I'm conflating it with the cities and the wealth of nations, um, that, you know, that, that her most provocative assertion is that cities predated civilization, right? That, you know, the, the first cities were, of course, crossroads, where hunter-gatherers traded arrowheads, you know, that this, they were always sort of nexuses. And so I'm sort of interested in, in basically, you know, how do we improve the cities in ways that go beyond short bicycle paths? Are there ways we can intervene? Um, and so, you know, to me as a, as a, as a journalist, uh, who is of course a self-taught urbanist, you know, I'm really interested in how Jane's ideas ricochet and resonate through other professions. Um, so of course, you know, her legacy has been adopted first by economists. There would be no Ed Glazer and Paul Romer without her writings. I mean, starting in 1986, where Robert Lucas referred to her as the first person to really understand why cities exist. Until 25 years ago, 30 years ago, economists couldn't tell you why cities happen. None of their laws predicted it. Um, she was the one to first sort of explain this. And Paul Romer once told me, you know, that, that uh, he had it on good authority that he was Jane Jacobs' favorite economist. I had to point out to him that according to his profession, Jane Jacobs is an honorary economist, one of the few people they've ever actually acknowledged. Um, and then today, of course, we're seeing, you know, that uh, her ideas are being picked up by physicists. So you may be familiar with the work of Jeffrey West and Louis Betancourt, the physicists who have solved the city, who are trying to make a science of cities. Um, I don't know, you know, they, Jeffrey West likes to say that they're trying to do Jacobs with the math, you know, that they see, they see themselves as trying to prove out her ideas. Um, and what I like about this is, you know, is that, that Betancourt, his younger protege, who would be an urbanist if he was here with us tonight in that age group, um, has sort of talked about, you know, has tried to pick up the question of the kind of a problem a city is, you know, what Jane sort of first touched upon. And his metaphor, what he thinks cities are, are gigantic social reactors. They are the places where we take social networks and compress them in space and time to create ignition, where we, just as a sun and a star ignites hydrogen atoms and fuses them into helium, throwing off light and heat, cities are where we basically ignite these social networks of people. I like to think where serendipity is the ignition process, where of course, you know, strangers can meet and throw off entirely new reactions. Um, this is what a city is about. Um, and so that's what we're gonna talk about our projects tonight here, you know, how can they ignite the city? Um, and so, you know, you're gonna hear from three projects. I think each of them sort of touches upon a different aspect of some of her writings and some of her legacy. Um, the first one is the startup box, which I think talks a bit about what she wrote about in, in the economy of cities, about how new work is created, right? About how people break away from old firms and find spaces to create and elaborate new ideas. And of course, she's most famous for, you know, that, that new ideas need old buildings, but what if they don't necessarily have to be old? How do we create new pop-up institutions, new places, new combinations of uses where people can be inspired to create new things? Um, hopefully they'll talk a bit about that. 
Um, the second group, you're gonna hear from Nine by 18, which really sort of touches, I think, upon sort of her work against Robert Moses, of course, in fighting against urban highways. Of course, we're never going to build a highway through Manhattan or the Bronx again. Uh, in fact, in America, now we're tearing them down. Um, but there is still plenty of bald concrete that is still inhibiting the city and inhibiting our ability to connect. And much of that is in the form of parking. And so I think you're gonna hear from them about how we can transform you know, naked asphalt into these heterogeneous places where you know, combinations of people happen, the kind of block she talked about in Death and Life. Um, and finally, you know, the third group is actually going to touch upon you know, uh, uh, the, side, the ballet of the sidewalks, only instead of a ballet, it's more of a boogie woogie. Um, the boogie down booth is going to talk a bit about how we can actually start using what is now popularly described as tactical urbanism to start reinvigorating the streetscape and actually in intensify its uses, right? We can remake the city we already have, we can increase the ability of us to interact within it in all sorts of contexts. Um, so with that, I wanna introduce and bring out our panelists.